Welcome here at the Maxim booth. It's great that you're sitting here and watching our presentations here. We've got a great lineup of presenters, great artists, and also welcome you here on the internet here at the Maxim booth. Uh, we've got two great guys here. It's Gustavo Sanchez. He's the product manager of um, Reflow. And we've got Thomas Schlick. He's a Hello. trainer for many years now, I think since version two yeah. already. A great trainer doing trainings all over the world. So welcome Gustavo Sanchez and Thomas Schlick for this presentation. Thanks. Thank you. Hello, guys. Thank you. Uh, thank you, the internet, for being there as well. Um, we're going to try and give you a quick intro on what Realflow is for those of you that don't know the product very well. And then I will hand it over to Thomas. And as uh, Greg was saying, that uh, Thomas is a great trainer. He's not only a Realflow guy, but he's a cinema for the guy. So if you're a cinema artist, then it's a perfect choice. So first, I'm going to give you a quick a story of uh, what Next Limit is. Next Limit is a Spanish company based in Madrid, and we have not only real flow but uh, Maxwell Render, Xflow, and other products in the in preparation there. And real flow is the first product that we released 16 years ago. It's a mature product. It's a kind of a standard in the industry for fluids. And we have uh, not only liquids, which is what people know real flow for, but we also have a really cool dynamics package that does real body dynamics, soft bodies, even fractures. We have a real wave ocean surface tool. And we have an extensive way of hooking up the, anything that you can do in Realflow with your pipeline, thanks to the C++ API that we provide. We have Python scripting. And since version 2013, we also have a visual scripting system based on nodal graphs. So this is really, really good. And finally, we also keep up with the industry and have uh, open source formats, such as Alembic, OpenBDB, Field3D, and pretty much anything that moves around in the BFX industry, we try to adopt. So uh, we can be flexible in any pipeline. I'm going to quickly show you first the latest showreel that we did. Well, not, not we did, but our clients did. So you know the type of uh, things that you will expect to see from Realflow. So this is from the film Pompeii, and that was created with the large scale server that we had called Hydrogen. Most of this show, uh, the shot that you see here is small, medium scale simulations which is pretty much what the industry in terms of commercials and motion graphics require. So hungry now, lunch time. This is from the film Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit, based back in London. And this is uh, again another shot from Mr. X in Toronto. And this is a really good, uh, sorry, I'm going to just quickly talk about this one. This is a large scale solver, and it's a really good example on how flexible we can be within a pipeline because um, this client that we have, uh, Mr. X in Toronto, they have uh, uh, Houdini, Maya, and other products probably in their uh, house. And they have real flow to do the fluids. And they move things back and forth from all of them. But especially because we have all these uh, open source formats, like OpenBDB and Alembic, they are flexible enough to, to work with all these packages. And you can find more information about this in our website. This is rendered with Maxwell Render. This is our in-house renderer. As you see, most of the work that we have in the show really is normally liquid fluids. Small scale, medium scale, and now we're getting more large scale. And simulations. So I'm going to quickly show you another piece that um, actually one of our interns. So if you're looking for an internship or you have know someone that is looking, we always take interns in house. And this is something that this guy is called Quentin Rosero. He's a French guy. 
has done in no time and it mostly shows dynamics with real flow. We have our proper, uh, proprietary dynamic solver called Caronte and it's really really good stable for doing uh, these type of simulations. You won't see any jittering or vibrations in the simulations. It's, it's mesh to mesh collision, really accurate. And it's, uh, of course, coupled with the fluid, so you can have fluid dynamics and really body dynamics or so body dynamics coupled together. Like in this exercise, you will see that the uh, balls bounce as the fluid pass through, etc. And the best way to learn all these things is uh, I will open Real Flow in a second to give you a quick uh, run through. But we have demo scenes that you can check out uh, from every single feature that we have in Real Flow. We have a section with a few demo scenes in there. I will stop this right now. I want to take. Well, actually, this is a cool example of something that he did using Python scripting and Real Flow. So maybe it's worth checking it out as well. And how to create an effect like that is. Kind of a straightforward with just a basic Python script. Okay. So yes, to set the, the what are we here? Yeah, we have Maxwell previews. So I will show you in a sec. The basic fact is that RealFlow is not a plugin; it's a standalone package, and you have to hook it up in your pipeline using our connectivity plugins. And the plugins that we have for Cinema 4D, the connectivity plugin and the RenderKit plugin that we, Thomas will be showing you later are really good and pretty much seamlessly the, the connection between the two products. Um, as I mentioned, we support open source formats such as Alembic and OpenBDB. So let me just go quickly to RealFlow and give you a one-on-one on how to do things in RealFlow. If you open RealFlow for the first time and you've never been here, um, it looks like pretty much any other 3D package. We have sort of color-coded uh, elements in there like blue is for liquids, red is for diamonds that we call the forces and other stuff. Yellow is geometry mostly and you have like the fracturing tools here, dynamic tools. Green is for meshes which is the geometrical representation once you have the particles you want to surround that with uh, polygonals. And then we have again the blue which is the ocean tools. Uh, just a quick 101 before I hand it over to Thomas. If you come to the uh, liquid particles, for example, and you just hit on a circle, it will create a node here, and by default, it will connect to a half. Um, everything in real flow is you need particles, you need forces, you need geometry. You need particles to simulate whatever you're going to simulate, you need forces to drive these uh, particle simulations, you need geometry to collide with those particles. So I need a force, for example, I could put the gravity, and again, it's connected there and I need something to collide with, and I could say, okay, just put a plane for the sake of simplicity here. So I have three things, and they are linked to a hub by default. If I click here, I see that there are, there are connections between the three nodes. And if I just simply control S, save the scene, and simulate, we will see that we get some simulation going. This is the most basic simulation of all. And if I stop it for a sec, and I come to the mesh, I can create a mesh to surround those particles. Right click, build, and I have a mesh there. I hide the particles, just hit zero, and we have a simulation in no time. I can come to the particle mesh, and I can hide the polygons here, selection highlighting. So every single node in RealFlow has a Maxwell render tab, so you can choose, for example, this to be honey. And if I press F6, I get honey there. So it's that simple. So you can preview your simulations, you can do these renders in command line like in no time. And now I'm going to be handing it over to Thomas so he can continue with the presentations on how these two great products talk to each other, which is basically this. We have the connectivity plugins I mentioned, and then we have the render kit, which creates uh, uh, meshes, the polygonal meshes at render time as the most or the core of the functionality. Thank you very much. I have one here. <laughs> All right. So let me just go back to Cinema 4D uh, to reflow for one second. Gustavo screwed my layout. <laughs> so.
All right. <clears throat> So first of all, hello and good afternoon. Welcome to IBC 2014. Glad you're here joining us today. <clears throat> also, hello to the internet. Welcome. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the connectivity pipeline between Reflow and Cinema 4D. And I've prepared a few basic projects for you just to give you an idea of how the workflow is, is um, actually handled. And we're scratching the surface a little bit to show you how you bring your reflow data over to Cinema 4D and the other way around your Cinema 4D data to reflow to use them as um, deflectors, as reaction objects, as uh, geometry for um, handling over to your um, public simulations. <clears throat> so over the, over the last years uh, Cinema 4D became really a relevant part in the field of motion graphics but it's also a very strong tool for visual effects. And Reflow has always been one of the few programs which supported Cinema 4D from the very beginning. The already mentioned connectivity uh, plugins uh, have been available for Cinema 4D from the very first days of Reflow. And about two years ago, we have been integrated the Reflow render kit to Cinema 4D as well. And now you can exploit the full spectrum of possibilities of, of both programs. <clears throat> And uh, this, of course, leads us to one question. What are the differences between the connectivity plugins and the render kit? And here I've um, made a little compilation with the most um, important facts. And the render kit has been developed to improve and accelerate the render process in Cinema 4D. Here, everything is based on particles and there is no support for geometry. It also contains a hybrid and particle meshing engines you've seen before for the large scale and the small scale fluids. And it has exactly the same parameters as you can find in Reflow. And this means that uh, meshes no longer are imported from Reflow because they are created directly at render time. When you start the render, the mesh will be created. And uh, this also means that a mesh will only exist in the computer's RAM as long as it takes to render the current frame. And other, afterwards, it will be deleted. So you can save a lot of storage resources simply by um, handling this over to the render kit. Particles uh, can also be multiplied with a so-called multipoint option. And with this option, you can create millions of particles at render time on the fly. So you do not have to re-simulate anything if you lack of particles. You simply switch on the multipoint option and then you can create vast amounts of particles also at render time and these particles will not be saved. And we've also a uh, dedicated displacement shader to add um, wave structures to hybrido meshes. The connectivity plugins on the other hand, um, they are used to exchange data between Reflow and Cinema 4D. So they support meshes, particles, geometry, and real wave. <clears throat> this also means that meshes cannot be created at render time and everything has to be available in Reflow before it can be imported. So you have to make a simulation, you have to create the meshes, store them, and then you import them back to Cinema 4D. Uh, there is also no support for MIST data. Uh, MIST are small drop lamps you get with um, hybrid simulation when splashes subdivide into very small drops and this is a, a cloudy and misty structure and this is something volumetrical and um, we have support for this in the render kit as well but not in the connectivity plugins. Another thing is um, that geometry you create and modify inside Reflow can be reconstructed from the safe data file. So we have a format called SD and everything that is created there can be loaded to Cinema 4D and all the motion data and all the um, geometry data will be reconstructed from this SD file directly. And finally, we have support for keyframe and animation and uh, PLA data, point level animation. And there's also support for textures and UVs. So these are the main differences. And now we can start with a very basic project. Um, 
where you will learn how to work with the render kit and the plugins in one scene. Because all of these elements can be combined freely inside Cinema 4D. There are no limits. So <clears throat> let me head over to Cinema 4D. And what you can see here is a very basic representation of a laundry drum from a, from a washing machine. And it's really a basic setup. And we have two caps to enclose everything. One here uh, has been made invisible to get a better view of the inner structure. <clears throat> and the cloth objects have been simulated with a different software and then imported to Cinema 4D. And these cloth objects here, they contain point level animation data. And the laundry drum itself and these spokes, they contain simple keyframe animation data. And the caps are static. So we have everything inside here that can be used in, in terms of animation. And now the aim is to export all this to Reflow because we want fluids to interact with the cloth and the laundry drum and all these elements. And for this purpose, we only need one plugin. And all these plugins and the render kit are free, by the way. Uh, there's no extra charge for them. So on the plugins and Reflow, you can find the Reflow SD exporter. And I just make this back. So here we have the objects, and you can choose which one you want to finally export. And in this case, we want to uh, save everything. And we click on Add All, and now it's in the exported objects. And the big question is, how do we get all the vertex animation, the PLA data, over to Reflow? And this can be done by simply choosing the relevant elements, here the close objects. And then we go to Set Selected to Vertex. And this is all you have to do. And now the point level animation data will be stored. And the rest of the elements, the laundry drum and the spokes, will be saved using the um, key animation with the matrix option. And the static objects here will be saved as well. And this is already everything. And now we can define a frame range. Um, here we're going to have 225 frames. And scale, by the way, oh, this one here, can be left untouched. <clears throat> uh, this is pretty important uh, because re uh, Cinema 4D scale is by default 100 times bigger than the scale in Reflow. And with a scale setting of 1, we maintain that everything matches together. So the scale in Cinema 4D will be exported to Reflow with exactly the same scale, and everything will be maintained. And you do not have to consider any scale changes. Um, and when you import everything back, the scale will be maintained as well. Though this, this is a pretty smooth workflow. Yeah, and uh, now we're ready to export everything. And you can see it's an SD file. Click on this and choose a folder, um, preferably this is the Reflow Projects Objects folder. And uh, we can save it there. Click on Export. And I can see how the frames are counting through. It takes a moment. And then the window closes automatically. So we can go over to Reflow now. And the objects we have exported right now can be imported to Reflow with a single command. And this is import object. And here you can find the washing machine cloth object we've just saved. And this is exactly the same representation here. And um, I'm going to make the front cap invisible again. Oh, sorry, just one thing. OK. And now here, we've got everything. And when we scrub the timeline, you can see how everything is moving. And this is the basic setup for the interaction with the fluids. And to save us some time, I've created the entire scene already for you. And I will give you a few hints on what I've done there. OK, so the idea here is to use three emitters. 
and they're called SPH foam water and water recycled. And what we're doing here is to create uh, first a water simulation and then we split this water into foam. And the foam itself will be transferred into water again uh, when it reaches a certain velocity. And this can be done with these filter demons you can see here. So we can check against a certain property, for example, velocity, age, or anything like that. And then we can define an expression, like uh, when the speed is greater than 5.0 meters per second, then the particles will be, will be transferred to a different emitter, the SPH form emitter here. And vice versa, this is possible as well, in this case with a second filter demon. So when the water has a speed lower than 3 meters per second, um, it will be <clears throat> considered water again. So it's a constant change of states between foam and water, foam and water, and uh, the result <clears throat> you can see uh, is something I've prepared in a, in a preview for you. Takes a while, so here we are. So now you can see how everything reacts with each other and how the, the foam particles are created and the water reacts with the closed objects and all that. <clears throat> and please also mind the colors here. These colors represent the fluid's velocity. And this is important. And such a, an attribute is also called a channel. And a channel can store um, values from the number of neighbor particles, for example, the fluid's age, viscosity, pressure, and all these physical attributes can be saved as channels. And they can be um, <coughs> saved with the particle files and the mesh. <coughs> okay, and so far we have only particles and uh, the reason why we have separated these particles from each other is simply that we want to render the water as a solid body of fluid. And on the other hand, we want to render the particles as a foamy structure. So this is basically the intention behind the separation. And to create a mesh, Gustavo, my colleague, already uh, showed it. Uh, we just need this particle mesh container here. And with a right click, we can insert different emitters. And here it's the SPH water and water recycle emitter. Click on OK. And then they will be attached to this um, node here. And now it's important to decide which of these channels we want to export because um, the, this channel data will later be used to extract vertex maps in Cinema 4D to in influence the shading of your mesh. So you can uh, really create white water, for example. When water is moving, you will see a whiting in effect the faster the, the water is. And this can be simulated with these channels. So you go to the um, mesh node, and here you can see a panel called particle channels. And when you click on it, you can see the entire range of channels. And here I've decided to use velocity, uh, the age, pressure and uh, curvature. So once you've made the remaining settings like polygon size and everything like that, uh, you're going to build the mesh with this button over there. And then everything what is displayed in orange here in the timeline will be meshed. And for each frame, one file will be created. And this is normally done with Reflow's standard format called bin, binary file. But for Cinema 4D, this is not really the best format because it does not change the entire range of these channels here. And there's also a format called MD. And we have an Export Central dialog uh, where you can find all the resources you can save. And you only have to look for the particle mesh node here and export the tree. And here you can see this MD format. And when you click on it, you can see exactly the same panel uh, channels we have defined here. And here's another way to choose which channels you want to save with the mesh finally. Uh, it's again velocity, age, pressure, and curvature. 
And it's very important in Cinema 4D that you keep this, this texture channel here activated as well, because this attribute is used to extract all the vertex maps inside Cinema 4D. So never disable this feature here, texture. And you should also leave the uh, mesh cache bin file here activated because it's Reflow's internal cache format and without it you cannot create previews, for example. So um, it's the best way to export both formats. And now we can uh, create the mesh and I did this already for you. Go over to Cinema 4D. And now I want to import this mesh. And um, this is again done with the plugin. And here it's the Reflow Mesh Importer. And on the setup, you can find everything to um, change the environmental conditions of the simulation. So we're going to choose the file sequence. <coughs> and go for the MD sequence and open it. And now you can see the mesh already. And of higher importance than the setup panel is the MD panel here. Uh, because here we find all the channels you've seen before in reflow. We again have velocity, age, pressure, and curvature. And over there, you can see the um, associated vertex maps. And here we have them again, velocity, age, pressure, and curvature. So now the question is, of course, how do I get all this data, this color-coded data, um, over to this mesh? And for this purpose, we need two materials. And here I've created a simple blue material and the white material. And the blue one represents the minimum values and the white one, the maximum values. And all the colors between will be interpolated. And the order is important. So we start with a, a blue material and then with the white one. And then you have to open the white material, create an alpha channel, go to texture, effects, and then you create a vertex map effect here. Click on the white uh, part here. And now you can simply drag one of these tags to this empty slot. And as you can see, nothing has really happened here. But when we render now, we can see this effect, but it's not very distinctive right now. But this can be changed because the opacity uh, from these vertex maps can be influenced. And for this purpose, we have another scale parameter here uh, in the MD tab, and when I lower this value, so something like 0 0.2 for example, and render everything, I can see a, a much more pronounced color distribution. And simply play with the values a little bit until you have found uh, what you were looking for. So in the next step, we also want to have the particles. And for this purpose, I'm going to use one of the render kit elements. And here we have the Reflow Render Kit. And this is a particle tool. I'm just going to load it. And on the particle files, we can load the foam particles we have created before. As you can see, you can load up to 10 sequences. And I'm going to choose the foam particles in this case, which we render, want to render separately. And I can see a few uh, dots here, not very much. And this is the reason why we're going to use this multipoint option over there. Um, because with this option, we can really increase the number of particles at render time. And you simply activate this feature with this button. And with a density value of 5, for example, when you have 10,000 particles inside your scene from Reflow and at a density value of 5, then you will get 50,000 particles for the render. So it's a multiplicator. And all these particles will be graded around an existing particle uh, within a certain radius. And this radius is called dispersion. And I'm going to set it to a pretty uh, small value here, something like 0 0.2, for example, uh, to match it with this radius here. And this radius tells us how large the particles will be actually rendered in Cinema 4D. And we're going to use a pretty 
small value here as well. So everything is very dense and the particles will be created around the existing ones in a, in a small cloud. And in this case, we're actually ran, uh, ready to render everything out and I've created a preview for you. Now this was not mine. So this is a possible result and in this case I've used the H channel to control the transparency and the colors of the fluid and the particles have been multiplied with a multipoint option. We had some 60,000 foam particles in the first run and here we have around um, 1 million and without re-simulating that. And you can see how everything matches. Uh, the fluid is reacting with the closed objects and the invisible laundry drum. So, as you can see, it doesn't take very much to, to import this data and exploit all the features you have seen before. <clears throat> But the creation of these meshes can also be done directly inside Cinema 4D. And this is the main purpose of the Reflow Render Kit. So let me switch over to Reflow. I've created another scene for you. And in this case, I've just created two emitters to fill a glass and I'm going to make this visible here so you can see here how the particles react with the glass and um, please mind the colors um, they are separated so we have two liquids two substances actually and once this simulation has been done you're going to create the mesh again so you add the particle mesh and in this case um, we can again right click and insert all emitters. We only have two emitters here. And now you can see a representation of the uh, associated emitters here. And here you have this mesh panel. And there you can find everything you need to influence and adjust your polygon representation of the fluid. And we've also separated, uh, separate parameters for the particles radius and uh, this radius tells the engine how tight the polygons will fit to the underlying particle cloud and this can be uh, influenced and adjusted separately. So once you've made your settings you simply create the entire mesh range, save everything and this time we do not create the mesh range because we only want to use the particles here <clears throat> oh, this is the old one. Okay, I've also created a scene for you where I've prepared everything. So, in this case, I've used this uh, render kit um, RK mesh node. This is exactly what you can see here. And Again, you're not working with meshes here, but only with particles. So what you're going to load are two particle sequences. And the mesh container here represents the mesh node in Reflow. And the sequences you can find here represent our emitters. And mind the mesh panel because you will find a representation of that one uh, here as well. So you hear exactly the same parameters. It's polygon size, smoothness, and um, weight normalization, for example. So all these elements can be found here as well. So uh, just load the sequences. In this case, we have two sequences. We had two fluids, when you if you remember. And here you can find the other one. And here you can also adjust the radius again. So now you also make your mesh settings. So if did it already here and <clears throat> now you want to see a preview of course 
Uh, here you can see only th see the particles right now, but no mesh. And there's a preview function here under uh, display. And you can tell it to show the mesh. And you can see just a few spots here, not very much. And this is because the level of detail has been set to 10 in this case. Just increase it to 100 and update. And now the mesh will be created on the fly. It's not imported. It has been created inside Cinema 4D. And another idea to do this is simply to render a frame. So this is another way to visualize your meshes. <clears throat> and you can also see that we have these vertex map tags here. And what's new are these one. They're called weight one and weight two. And this is because we have two fluids. And when you go to the uh, channels tab, you can see these weight maps here. You can activate or deactivate them. And you can also activate the precise option. And what you're going to see now is, is pretty cool because you only have to create a so-called melt material from the material manager and two other materials. Um, here I've created two milky materials. And you add this one. And the last material is always this melt material I've created. Now I've added it to the background as well. Okay. <laughs> so just redo it. And when you render now, you can see something pretty astonishing. Because these weight maps create a blending effect. And now the, the colors of these mixing fluids are blended together. And this is why I was telling you um, to mind the colors here. Uh, we have two different fluids. And in Cinema 4D, it's possible to blend these fluids together. And this is a pretty unique feature. You only find this one in uh, 3D Max currently. So uh, a Cinema 4D render kit and plugins are very advanced in terms to uh, compare to other plugins. And it's also possible to, to influence the melting effect here uh, with this melt index, index from the melt material. It accepts positive and negative values, and you just can play with the values to get the look uh, you want to achieve. And of course, I've created a preview for you. Just a second. Always happens to me. Oh, there it is. And of course, you can add motion blur, for example. And here you can see the entire effect. And you can also see how the colors fade over time. And the fluid is really mixing, leaving only a few uh, colored spots behind. So this is a very basic workflow. And um, it's, it's valid for everything you do inside Reflow with particles and the meshes. And there's much more to explore. Um, Another very interesting combination is to mix pyrocluster with particles from reflow to create dust clouds, for example. And to do this, I've also created a basic project for you. Just open it. And here we have a collapsing tower. Um, all the fragmentation, and the particle simulation has been done inside reflow. And the particles here have been created with a simple Python script inside Reflow at the edges and vertices of the um, fragments here. And, now, and then I brought all the geometry and all the particles back to Cinema 4D with the connectivity plugins. Uh, I used the particle importer here and the SD importer to load all the geometry. And in order to create a connection between Pyrocluster and Reflow, particles, we only need a, a few clicks. So first of all, you go to Simulate and create a particle geometry object. And you attach it to this container here, where the particles are stored. And then you can see a particle group slot 
here in the um, attributes manager. Now go again to simulate and create the thinking particle settings. And here you can find a thinking particles representation of the um, particles. And now I drag this group over here. Now we're almost done. I've also already created the prior cluster materials and the environment. <clears throat> and then you attach the prior cluster material to the particle geometry object. And go back to the container here. And <clears throat> in this case, we have to go to the setup panel and activate keep order of particles because pyro cluster requires a fixed ID. This is very important to activate it. And then you can also um, change the particles radius to zero because we do not want to create or render any particles here, only the, partic uh, only the pyro cluster clouds. So, this is already everything we have to do. Just a few clicks and you have a full connection between both worlds. And the result could look like that. And I have pretty nice dust clouds. You can again add motion blur to the uh, imported objects. And this is really a pretty straightforward of connecting uh, particles with volumetric shaders. So, in the final example, I want to another feature which is very strong and um, not available in any and every uh, platform. And Cinema 4D is one of the few platforms where you can have this feature. And this one is called Particle Shading. So here you can see a fluid simulation and the particles have been attracted uh, with several demons and forces to create this um, hose kind. And I again used a simple um, reflow particle importer plugin. And on the display, I've added one of these channels here. And with particles, you do not have to work with vertex maps because all the information is directly read from the particle files. And you have a long list of different attributes you can choose from. And here I've used velocity. And I've also um, created a different color range here, something ranging from yellow to blue. And this is what you can see here. It's a representation of the velocity uh, coded with colors. <clears throat> and in this case, I've also used a different um, display mode. You can view them as particles, which is not very good because you can hardly see anything. And you can visualize them as circles, what I did here, and you can change this radius. But this is only for um, visualization purposes, um, not for the render. For the render, I've used um, the default render type a sphere with a radius of 1.5 centimeters. And then we can exploit a pretty cool feature here. And this is called Add Shader under the Render panel. And when you add it, you will see that uh, another uh, down there, another material has been created and attached to the particle importer plugin directly. And <clears throat> when you render now, you can see how the particles are shaded individually based on their velocities. And here, this effect, this effect is again not very distinctive, but it can be changed with just a few clicks. And on the display again, you'll find this field here, automatic range. I'll simply disable it, and now you can use your own values to drive the colors. And these current min and max values, they will help you. They are a reference and when you're going to choose a smaller value like the one you can see under current max for example some, something like seven uh, then you can see how the color has changed and of course uh, this will be represented in your render as well
And of course, these colors are dynamically driven because velocity is changing over time. And what you get is a, a vivid simulation with color-coded velocities. And this is pretty nice for all kinds of commercials, for example. And now you can see the color distribution over time. Uh, let me play it again. And of course, you do not have to use spheres. You can use any other object as an instance as well. You can use cubes, cones, or whatever you want to. And to, to do that, you just have to go to the render tab again. And instead of sphere, you're going to use the object type. And then you have another slot, create a new object, like a cube, for example, and um, <clears throat> drag it over to the render instance. And then everything will be rendered as cubes, but with the same color distribution. And this is the important thing. So you have endless possibilities here, and we are only scratching the surface. Uh, these plugins have by far more possibilities, and it's always a bit difficult to find the right mixture between um, Reflow and Cinema 4D here, of course. But I hope I was able to give you a short introduction and to get a better understanding of how these two worlds act together. So thank you very much for your attention and being here. Have a nice day. Thank you. Enjoy your stay.